Okay, welcome back. Um, I've also started the recording. I, I think we have one more minute, so let's wait. Okay, so uh, we're talking about matrix groups. Uh, so, you know, groups are abstract objects. You know, when we talked about the discrete groups, you know, they were essentially defined in terms of their multiplication table, right? So, however, you know, most of the Lie groups are naturally defined in terms of matrices, okay? And uh, so not only that, a given matrix group can be represented in an infinite number of ways. So I've just introduced the word represented. This is actually a, a very important word in group theory. So, uh, so these matrix representations of a matrix group you know, is a is an isomorphism between the group the matrix group and some Uh, subgroup or some subset, I should say, some, um, you know, some subset that is some sort of embedding of, say, the relevant, say, GLNR or GLNC. So what I mean is that suppose you take a group like SU2. It's a matrix group of two by two unitary matrices with determinant one. But there could be a representation of this group because it's a complex group for some given n, you could find a subset of this group. So there is some subset of this group H such that it's isomorphic to SU2, where H is some n by n uh, set of n by n matrices, okay? 
So this would be an n by n representation, an n dimensional representation of SU2. Okay, so uh, I, this is being, I'm being very vague here and just uh, expo okay. explaining that qualitatively, but I will make it more precise. Not oh, sure. Uh, can we call this as uh, embedding in the GL group of n dimension? Yeah, yeah, it's an embedding. Okay. All right, so let's go and define what is our representation of the group, okay? And representation theory is an important aspect of group theory. And um, a lot of physics and mathematics as well is concerned about representation of groups. So a group theory would not have much value without representation theory. Repre Sorry. representation of a group. Okay, so let's define this. Uh, consider an n-dimensional complex vector space Vn, okay? So let T be a linear map you know, on Vn, that is T maps Vn to itself you know, such that T acting on some element X in VN goes to some other element X prime, which is T acting on X, okay? And T must have the property that T alpha times X plus beta times y is equal to alpha t of x plus beta t of y, where x and y are elements of my vector space and alpha and beta are elements of the field of complex numbers. Okay, so this is so this equation expresses linearity. Sorry. This expression is the statement of linearity. Okay. Now, if the map is one-to-one, uh, one. you know, then there exists the inverse map T inverse, such that T inverse T acting on X is equal to T T inverse acting on X equal to X, right? The identity operator acting on X, which is X, right? For all X. So it has to be one, one and on two, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, now let G be a group, okay? 
So far, we haven't talked about groups. Let G be a group. Now, if for each element, say G, small g and big G, there exists a linear invertible map T such that G1, the T acting on G1 um, composed with G2 is equal to T1 acting on G1 times T1 acting on G2. Okay, then we say that the operators, the linear operators, T of G uh, form an N dimensional linear representation of the group G. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, let me make a couple of comments. Comment number one is that the dimension V of N, you know, need not be the dimension of G. Okay. In fact, in most cases, it's not. Let me rephrase that because need not means that something is natural. The dimension of Vn is not, uh, is not in general, the dimension of G. Okay, so this is basically the representation of a group, which is an abstract object in terms of action by a set of linear operators on a vector space, which is also an abstract object, right? When I talk about a vector space, what do you think? What is a, what is a vector space? Can someone tell me? A vector space is an abstract concept. Yes, it is not rows and columns. That's just a representation. A vector space is a, is a set which satisfies the axioms of uh, a vector space, right? All vector space of a given dimension over a given field are isomorphic. Okay. To specify a vector space for finite dimensions at least, all you need is the dimension and the field over which you're defining it. So I had a question. Yeah. So uh, you said the, the, you defined the linear transformation or the representation in terms of the map P. So where is the map from and where does it take the elements? The map is from the group to the space of linear operators. Uh, isn't T in the space of linear operator? Yeah. So acting it all on an element cannot uh, put it in the space of linear operator. That should be in some other space. 
because like t and t of x are the same thing t of x is an element and t is the operator so like where is the target i mean where is the codomain uh let me see if i understand this so okay uh, i think it's probably uh, my notation was not the cleanest uh, when i you know here i'm what i'm defining is i'm just defining a linear operator okay But when I'm talking about the representation, I'm defining a set of linear operators, which I'm calling T. Each linear operator is specified by an element of the group G. Okay. So here I have essentially multiple linear operators, T, each of which are specified by an element G. And I'm assuming that linear operators can be composed in some natural way. So uh, T is a map from G to VN, right? Or? No, T is a map from G to the space of operators on VN. Oh, okay, so like F of VN or some notation like that. Exactly, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, okay good. Any other questions or comments?